Greetings, everyone. I am happy to be with you in spirit again. Let us take a moment to take a deep breath. And I invite you to center your heart and your spirits with mine. We hear from first the psalmist in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And I have included a second scripture reading for this week from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 14 through 16. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. I invite you to join with me now in our prayer. Holy One, Today we join our hearts together and give thanks for your presence. Today we feel each other's joy and sorrow as we share in prayer together. Today we will break bread together and remember we are one. Today and every day, though we cannot be together, we are the church. And we gather across time and space to worship you now. Almighty God, we confess our frustration and our anger. We confess at times we should have held our tongue and didn't. We confess at times we are distracted by things that will not matter tomorrow, and yet they consume our time today. We confess that in our uncertainty, instead of trusting in you, we turn to the voices of fear. Forgive us. Call us to repent, to turn to empathy and understanding, and to seek your wisdom. In this world that has turned upside down, we remember that you are our rock and our salvation. You are what grounds us keeps us steady, and will see us through. Thank you for the peace of forgiveness you put in our hearts. May we constantly turn to you and be filled with love for one another. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This verse expresses the message of the entire psalm, namely that Yahweh satisfies our every need. Indeed, Psalm 23 delivers some of the most beautiful and comforting images in the Bible. So it comes as no surprise that Psalm 23 would be one of our favorites. But the imagery in the psalm is also Full of surprises. The pastoral images that dominate the beginning of the psalm, the shepherd, the life-giving pasture, the calm waters, 
all of these actually work together to describe a journey, not the destination that sometimes we think of, but a journey that God is guiding us on. The rest that we do hear about in the green pastures is in actuality temporary. The psalmist we see is on the go, walking beside the water, walking along the paths and through the valleys. After describing the blessing that awaits the psalmist in the house of the Lord, the text again puts us in motion. It sets a picture of the psalmist saying, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. I'll be pursued by goodness and mercy. It's not that we get to the pleasant pastures, the green valleys, and take a seat and never get up again, but that we're in motion. And God's goodness and mercy come along pursuing behind us. And for most of us, the end of the psalm provides a picture of unending bliss in the house of the Lord. We read, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Dwell, have you thought much about that word and what it means? The word we translate as dwell in Hebrew is actually shuv. Shuv can also indicate a return with the desire to stay where you end up, to return to something and never part from it again. So what we translate as I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long can more accurately be understood as I will continually return. I will continually return to Yahweh's presence my whole life long. So have you thought much about the psalmist's journey, about your journey, the journey of life? We hear in Psalm 23 that the journey consists of the paths of righteousness. The psalmist understands his journey of life as one of living, living and moving in paths of justice, promoting and sustaining right relationships with one another. And this understanding is also upheld by the passage from Ezekiel, and that's why I really wanted to include that for today. When we read Psalm 23, I think it's important to remember that the Good Shepherd is leading us and calling us to live in such a way that we are promoting justice for the entire world, for one another. We are directed, commanded even, to care for one another. We're directed to care for the marginalized, the oppressed, those who don't have a voice. And now this is where it gets a little personal, and you may feel like I'm stepping on toes, but that's part of what I do a little bit. In love, of course. See, I hear from many of you that you are just fed up with the restrictions. You're tired of feeling confined or imprisoned even. I've heard that language. I'm in a prison in my apartment. I understand you want to be out on the patios. You want to be down in your lobbies. You're tired of feeling caged up. And I do hear what you're saying. First, I want to let you know that I do. I understand in a way where you're coming from because I miss eating out. I miss going to the movies and camping. And I am sick to death of having to wear a mask to the grocery store when I do go out. And you may or may not know I have asthma. I deal with that myself. Those masks make it harder to breathe. So I want you to know that I hear you. And I can empathize with you. But see, here's the thing. The Good Shepherd calls us to follow those paths of justice. The Good Shepherd is calling us to love and care 
for one another. And right now, that looks like staying home whenever we possibly can. Right now, that looks like wearing the mask and washing our hands and keeping six feet of distance when all we really want to do is to reach out and hold those we love and care for. Leading a life focused on the well-being of others is not always comfortable. It's not always easy, but it is always the right thing to do. The psalmist and Ezekiel remind us that God is with us through all of it. That God will supply our every need. Need being the focus word there. We will be given rest as needed. We will be strengthened. God is always caring for us. So let's care for one another. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in our prayer for healing. Holy One, as we turn to you, turn our hearts to each other. May we reach out and check in with those we haven't heard from, to offer a listening ear and to share the good news. May we seek to learn how we might pray for each other, how we might help one another, and how we can reflect your image in the world. Holy One, shine in us your love, your compassion, your justice, so we might be shining lights of your reflection around the world. Amen. Amen, and God bless you.